Welcome back to my channel. Did I even start recording? Oh, I did. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Wolf Photo, and I am the half dollar uh, that fell out of my head's favorite photographer. And I bet you didn't know that I was a magician, so hit the fucking subscribe button below. Well, that was a pretty stupid intro, but you know, it's all for shits and giggles, and I really just wanted a snack. So, that was great, and I really love eating change. But anyway guys, um, today we're back with another video, and I kind of decided, I was going between two things, like I always do when I film a video, and then I was like, well, I'm dropping two videos a week now, so I have time to hit anything, so it doesn't really matter what I make a video on, as long as it's informational and it helps you guys out. So, one of the most asked questions that I get is, what camera should I buy? What camera do you recommend? Is this a better camera or is this a better camera? I'm a beginner, what camera should I get? Well, I'm here to answer that question in the best way that I can possible. And obviously, you clicked on this video, what camera should I buy? I have a very interesting take on what kind of cameras people should buy. When most photographers do this video, they come up with five different cameras and they give you the specs on each and every one. They tell you which one's better. They tell you which one has a better ISO, which one has a better megapixel and, and all of that stuff. Now listen, I, I, I understand that you're probably a beginner photographer. This video is for beginner photographers, people who want to start photography and they want to finally upgrade to an actual camera, to an actual DSLR with interchangeable lenses. My intention for this video is not to get too crazy about the technical specs of these cameras. Now if that's what you're looking for, great. You can look up the cameras that I'm about to mention and you can check out every single spec for this camera. Basically this video is to give you my take on why you should buy these cameras and why it is very important to buy these cameras. To start this off, well, the very first thing that I took photos on was an iPhone 5C. And I've mentioned that in my videos before. After I had like two, three iPhones, I upgraded to a Nikon D3300 and I used the kit lens for the longest time. This Nikon D3300 was absolutely incredible and it did me super well and it basically kicked off my journey in photography. So I'm gonna recommend two cameras. For beginner photographers, one Nikon, one Canon. You can obviously choose. I'm always going to go Nikon over Canon. Before I recommend these cameras, why do I think that these cameras are important? To set the basis, there's two different types of cameras that you can buy. You can buy a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. Now, as a beginner photographer, my recommendation to you and something that I believe wholeheartedly is that you do not even consider buying a mirrorless camera. Probably some people will say that is probably the dumbest idea ever. You should always buy a mirrorless camera. Mirrorless is like the world's going to go to mirrorless eventually and there's going to be no more DSLRs. I do agree with those statements, but I think that as a beginner, you should always, always choose a DSLR. If I had it my way, I would say you should choose an SLR, which is a single lens reflex camera, which is a 35 millimeter film camera. What I believe that you should do, and I will explain this reason why I think that you should buy a DSLR. And there's multiple reasons why I think you should buy a DSLR. The cameras that I'm gonna recommend are both under 400. Both of them are 399.95. But alongside the money aspect, because you can buy the Sony A series, the A6000 and stuff like that, but I would say hold off on that. I'm gonna give you multiple reasons why. Reason number one, one of the biggest reasons I believe that you should be shooting on DSLRs. When you shoot a DSLR, there's this thing called chimping. And chimping, I'll use this camera for example. Chimping is, this is a film camera by the way. Chimping is when you take your camera, you shoot a shot, you look down to see if the shot is exposed properly. If it is not, you readjust your settings, and then you shoot again, check to see if the shot's right, readjust your settings a little bit more, shoot again, oh, the shot's right, I'm gonna continue to shoot on those settings. That is what chimping is, and a lot of people try to 
stop chimping. A lot of people will say that chimping is bad. I've heard that, how can I chimp less? Well, the way you can chimp less is you can learn how to shoot manual settings properly. The reason I think you should get a DSLR is because to see the photo that you're shooting, you have to set your settings, take a shot, and then look at it. What that does is that makes you practice photography and that makes you learn how to shoot manually on a camera. Now, if you shoot on a mirrorless camera and you set those settings, it manually shows shows you how the photo will look after you take it. If you set all of your settings, the screen and inside your viewfinder will show you exactly what the photo will look like. Now, you might be saying, oh, that's great. Yes, that is great. But it also is not great for someone who does not understand what ISO is, aperture, and shutter speed are. If you don't understand that stuff, photography is going to get hard and it's gonna get increasingly difficult. I think that for you to become the best photographer, you need to learn how to use those settings properly. If you get a mirrorless camera and you don't discipline yourself enough, which most people won't, to learn what those are and learn the ins and outs of them to the fullest, then you're going to be missing out on a lot. DSLRs are the best way to learn that stuff, in my opinion. I think that when you pick up a DSLR, you have to expose the image properly. And if you don't, you don't get a shot. So I would advise you, for your learning's sake, and if you want to be the best photographer that you can be, start shooting on a DSLR. Don't jump to mirrorless, okay? Photography is a journey. I've been shooting for six to seven years. I started on a DSLR four to five years ago. I, I had that camera for three years. That then I upgraded to another DSLR, had that DSLR for maybe nine months, and then upgraded to a Sony. So there's no reason that you can't sell your old cameras and upgrade. You can always eventually get a mirrorless, but I think for learning purposes, you should get a DSLR. Reason number two why you should get a DSLR. These cameras are relatively inexpensive. $400 for a whole camera. You get a body and a kit lens. Now another thing you can do with your DSLR to take your photos to the next level is upgrade your kit lens to another lens. These lenses will be better quality and they will be better pieces of glass than the kit lens. Now with DSLRs, these lenses are relatively inexpensive. Now if you go to a mirrorless camera and you want to upgrade your lens, it is extremely expensive. That's kind of the situation I'm in with my Sony right now. I shoot on a Sony a7 II and I have the kit lens, which is absolutely wonderful and I love it, but I do want to upgrade to another lens. I want to get a 17-55 to f2.8, which would be an upgraded versatile lens that I could use on a daily basis but a really good one is roughly eight hundred to one thousand dollars and right now I can't afford that shooting on a DSLR brings a lot of benefits you get to learn properly you get a cheap camera and you can upgrade your lenses for cheap I honestly don't see any downsides to shooting DSLRs honestly if I had it my way I would still be shooting a DSLR with all of that being said, my speech on why you should have a DSLR, without further ado, let's talk about the cameras that I recommend. As I am a Sony shooter, I will say that one of my favorite camera brands is Nikon. I would recommend Nikon. I mean, I, I, going from Nikon, the Nikon website, to the Canon website. Nikon's website is just 10 times better in all honesty, but that's my opinion. I would recommend getting the Nikon camera, but you know, Canon is a very reputable camera manufacturer as well. So go with the Canon camera if you like Canon better. So the first camera um, that I'm gonna recommend is the Nikon D3500. And here's a picture of it right here. The Nikon D3500 is an upgraded version of the Nikon D3300 that I shot on when I first started. But the most recent one out right now is the D3500. The Nikon D3500 is a crop sensor camera. So there's different sensors in different cameras. My Sony a7 is a full frame camera and it has a bigger sensor than this camera would have. So right here is a diagram of sensors and sensor sizes. The only difference that these sensors offer is low light capabilities, more megapixels, Stuff that as a beginner photographer doesn't really matter. It's just all how you use the camera and how you use your creativity up here. That's my opinion. Now it does matter to a certain extent, but the camera that you use is just a tool. So don't focus on the numbers too much as a beginner. You'll figure out what you need and what you want in a camera. So this is a crop sensor camera. No problem with that. I shot on a crop sensor camera for the first four years of my photography career. It's how you use your camera, not what kind of camera you have. This camera is a 24.2 megapixel camera, which is very good 
for the camera of this price. It also has five FPS continuous shooting. So that's five frames per second. So if you set your camera on continuous shutter and you hold the button down, it will shoot five photos in one second, which is very, very good for capturing action shots and fast moving objects. It has an ISO range of 100 to 25,600, which is extremely good for a crop sensored camera. And when I use this camera, I'm not sure if it had this ISO range, but the ISO range that it had did me extremely well. I didn't notice that many noise issues. It also has full HD 1080p shooting, which is a definite benefit for people who want to shoot video as well. For a beginner, this is the best route to go. Now, if you want a Canon camera, I will recommend a Canon EOS Rebel T7. And here's a photo of it right here. This camera is equally as good, although looking at the specs, I would definitely recommend the Nikon over this camera. This camera is also a crop sensored camera. It has a 24.1 megapixel count. That is 0.1 below the Nikon camera, which you're not gonna notice that big of a difference, but it is a difference. It is a little bit lower on megapixels. This camera also has three frames per second, which is not as good as the five frames per second. Three frames per second is not a lot, and I would definitely, definitely recommend getting something that can shoot a high FPS. The ISO range on this camera is from 100, and its highest is to 12,800, which is significantly lower than the ISO range on the Nikon camera. So these cameras are roughly the same. They are basic starter cameras for under $400. They have basic kit lenses on them, and they will do the job very well, but when I'm looking at these side by side and comparing them, to me, the Nikon seems like the obvious choice. I'm sure there's better Canon cameras that are a little bit more, but like I said, I wanna keep the same price range of under 400 without tax. These two cameras compare very well together, but the Nikon seems like the obvious choice. Obviously, like I said, both of these cameras are extremely good and you will be happy with either camera that you buy. Go get the Nikon one if you're looking for a new camera as a beginner photographer. Get a DSLR for your first camera, that is definitely your best bet, and I would recommend one of these. I'll put the links to them both down in the bio so you can check both of them out and see which one you like better. So with all that being said, I hope that you like these camera recommendations and I hope that it inspires you to buy a camera. I also hope that my little spiel in the beginning encourages you to buy a DSLR and not a mirrorless camera for your first camera. I think that is extremely important. Now there will be a lot of people that do disagree with me and there will be a lot of people that do agree with me. To each his own, I respect anyone with any kind of camera, anyone creating art in any way that you started. If you started on a mirrorless, I don't shame you. I don't not believe in that journey. Um, everybody's journey is different. I'm telling you my journey and why I believe that you should start on a DSLR and these are my recommendations for cameras for beginner photographers. If you have any questions about cameras, if you have any concerns about the camera that you're looking to purchase, put it in the comments below or shoot me a DM over on Instagram. I check my DMs and I will read them all. If you're here and I have not reviewed your photos, shoot me a DM saying that you came from this video. As always, if you like the content, if you like the information that I put in this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you like this. And if you don't already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate that. You guys supporting me on here means the world to me and I cannot wait to make another video for you. So comment some video ideas. I have a ton, but I'd like to hear your video ideas. If you have something you want to learn, something you want me to talk about, something you want to hear my opinion on, go ahead and comment it below and I will make a whole video for you. So thank you all so much. I hope to see you in another video. Thank you for stopping in and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Keep shooting, get creative.